There are a lot of things that you can do in the backcountry uh, to kind of stabilize yourself before help arrives, or at least get yourself in a position in which you're at least somewhat mobile to get to where you can get some better help or definitive help for your injury. I would say there are three or four injuries that are probably the most common as it relates to winter sports, skiing, uh, hiking, sledding, etc. a number of things. Um, the first one would be a knee ligament injury. Knee ligament injuries unfortunately are very, very common this type of year and they occur via all different kinds of mechanisms. Um, the next thing would be wrist fractures. Uh, wrist fractures are so common because that's how we protect ourselves when we fall. And ice and snow unfortunately lead to falls, not just when you're wearing skis or snowshoes or anything else, but simply when you're walking from point A to point B. The other thing uh, would be unfortunately uh, fractures of the lower extremities. So uh, tibia fracture, ankle fracture, even femur fractures when uh, it involves a lot of energy in a tree, a stationary object. Um, the femur will break and so that's another common one. Uh, the other thing that's probably worth mentioning in this setting is a shoulder dislocation. That's also a very common injury as it relates to a fall. The first thing we're going to want to accomplish is to stabilize that fracture or the joint if it's unstable uh, for a couple of reasons. The first one would simply be for pain control uh, to reduce pain um, and the second one would be for transport, either for you to be able to transport yourself out of the circumstance you're in or to facilitate other people helping move you. When we're dealing with a fracture, we want to immobilize the joint above and the joint below. With a dislocation, you just want to span that joint as much as you can. And so there are a number of things that you might be carrying in your backcountry pack or otherwise that you can use to accomplish that task. It really doesn't matter what it is. It just matters that you're able to immobilize the joint or the bone as best you can. In the setting of, for example, a wrist fracture, there are a number of things that we could use to immobilize that wrist fracture. The first thing I can think of would be a pair of goggles uh, and simply a strap from your pack um, or if you have a little tape or other kind of cord that you might carry with you, you can simply use that to circumferentially wrap the ski goggle around the wrist to immobilize it to the point that your, your pain is reduced. And I would leave the glove on, obviously. And you don't necessarily need to go into great detail inspecting the fracture, etc. at this stage of the game. You know it's broken, you know it's injured. Your goal is simply to immobilize it for comfort and to facilitate transport. The other thing that uh, may come into play, uh, certainly as it would relate to, say, an ankle fracture or even a tibia fracture, uh, would be a longer uh, object that you would need to span that uh, uh, bone. And the first thing that would come to mind for me would be uh, simply a ski pole. A uh, ski pole would be an easy way to immobilize both the ankle and the knee. Even a ski could be used for that if you needed, needed to. And the way to do that would simply be to span again both the joint below and above the area of the suspected fracture and then wrap that circumferentially with a strap from your pack tape, rope, whatever it would take to just secure that as best you could. A shoulder dislocation, uh, initially, once it's occurred, uh, the best thing to do is going to be to actually reduce that shoulder uh, if you have the ability to do so. And, and uh, usually we do that by what's called traction countertraction, which means you stabilize the torso and then you apply traction to the involved extremity to the point that slowly as you apply steady as a, as you apply steady consistent traction the ball will kind of pop back into the socket if that's able to be accomplished the next thing to do would be to immobilize that shoulder in a position of comfort again to try to facilitate transport or mobility out of the circumstance that you're in just having a basic understanding of uh, fracture care and joint immobilization helps a patient so that when the injury does occur uh, they're not as intimidated or afraid of the process that they may go through in order to have the injury managed. But I also think it can lead to ultimately a better outcome for the, for the injured patient. And what I mean by that is that uh, if, for example, you have an unstable tibia fracture or an unstable wrist fracture, uh, then allowing that, that fracture to continue to move over a longer period of time will create for more soft tissue trauma, more swelling, more discomfort, et cetera. And so if we can control that initially by immobilizing the joint or fracture, it will reduce the amount of swelling associated with the injury and hopefully facilitate a quicker recovery and return to activity.